Now Adam knew his uh, knew Eve's wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, "I have acquired a man through God." Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a shepherd of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now in the process of time, Cain brought a sacrifice to the Lord from the fruits of the ground. Abel also brought a sacrifice from the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. The Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his sacrifices. So Cain was extremely sorrowful and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you extremely sorrowful? And why has your countenance fallen? Did you not sin, even though you brought it rightly, but did not divide it rightly? Be still, his recourse shall be to you, and you shall rule over him. First of all, I just want to mention new here. It's another word for sleep with. It's, they're, they're trying to insinuate that the context sleep with. So Adam knew his wife, and they bore Cain and Abel, the older brother being Cain and the younger brother being Abel. Cain, he took care of like a bunch of lands. So a tiller of the land is basically someone who's like almost like a farmer, but more like a cultivator, a cultivator if you want. Whereas then Abel was someone who took care of the sheep. Now a lot of people here, they don't understand. Oh, by the way, countenance here, countenance means face so when he says countenance his countenance fell that means his face became gloomy so a lot of people here were asking like what happened why did god not accept cain's sacrifice why did he only accept abel and how could god blame cain for being upset and angry with abel for this well because the sacrifices were different it had nothing to do whether it be whether it be like fruits and vegetables or whether it be sheep the difference was is that Cain never gave God anything special. He didn't. He gave him a run of the old mill. He just picked up a bunch of fruits and he gave it to him. Whereas in Abel, he gave him the firstborn of his flock. You see that? The firstborn of his flock. And so that's why God told him, Did you not sin? Because Cain knew there's a reason why his offering was not accepted. This is why I wrote about it. There was nothing unique to Cain's sacrifice to God. Cain was unjustifiably jealous of Abel because he knew the difference. It was not a fact that God accepted this and didn't accept that. It was the level of the gift. It was the worthiness of the gift that they had both presented them. And they, but then he told him, he reassured him. He, want, he didn't want him angry because he could, he could look in his heart and he could tell that Cain really wanted to kill Abel at that point. And he told him, be still, calm down. His recourse shall be to you and you shall rule over him. Why? Because Cain is the older brother here. So Abel has to answer to Cain. So he's telling him, every day he has to answer to you. So don't be angry, relax, calm down. I wrote it here. God is telling Cain to calm his anger and that since he's Abel's older brother and Abel must listen to him, he is Abel's keeper. Or in other words, he's responsible for Abel's safety. Let's continue. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, and his, bro his, against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then God said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? He replied, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Thus God said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You will be groaning and trembling on the earth. Then God said to the Lord, My guilt is too great to be forgiven. Surely you have driven me out of out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be groaning and trembling on the earth. Then it will happen. If anyone finds me, he will kill me. So the Lord God said to him, Not so. Whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. 
Thus the Lord set a sign on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, opposite of Eden. Again, this last part right here is a reference to what I was saying about the whole concept of being right and left. But my first, my first reference here, am I my brother's keeper? It goes back to what I was saying here when God was telling him to be still. He was telling him, don't worry, you are still Abel's keeper. And so God and so Cain almost mockingly was, to, was telling God, Am I my brother's keeper? That's what the reference was right here. Now I highlighted something in red here. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. This is very important because this shows you that even the particles, even the particles, such as blood, the particles, the chemicals, whatever you want to call them, I'm not a scientist here. But they call out to him and they respond to him. And that's how God is able to control the weather and control all these things because they're all part of his creation. They are all forced to listen to him. But we have free will. He gave us free will. And what, I, and what we've seen from now is that on two separate occasions, on two big separate occasions, is that we have not done the correct thing with our free will. Yet God still gives us it. Gives us it all these years later not only that he forgave Cain because he told him not so when God said I am unforgivable he said not so he did forgive him although he punished him he did forgive him you know there's a youtuber that I watch he has a podcast he's called uh, Ruslan and uh, I'm gonna mention him I'm gonna add uh, his channel in the description uh, he has a famous saying you get to choose your sin, but you don't get to choose its consequences. So although he was punished, although Cain was punished, he was also forgiven. Hence why God said, whoever kills Cain, he, my vengeance will be upon him sevenfold. Let's continue. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Muhajel, and Muhajel begot Mesushael, and Mesushael begot Lamech. Then Lamech took two wives for himself. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the, uh, of the second was Zila. So Ada bore Jabal, for, bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubel. He is the one who invented the psaltery and the harp. As for Zyla, she also bore two Balkane, a smith and a manufacturer of bronze and iron. The sister of two Balkane was Neama. Then Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zyla, Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech, and listen carefully to my words, because I killed a man for wounding me, and a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech, 77-fold. Guys, this is, this is so sad how history is playing out. Because a couple of things here. Just a couple of small things I want to mention here. Uh, I just want to highlight Enoch here because uh, Enoch is a very important character. Although he's, he's not as mentioned or as, like, he's not as mentioned as everyone, as all these other big prophets. But Enoch is someone we should remember. And it's coming up, like, what happened to him was, was miraculous. But as you can see, Lamech here, he has two wives, and he told them, yeah, you know, I killed a man for wounding me, I killed a young man for hurting me. And then he declared upon himself, because he knew what happened with Cain, he declared upon himself that if any man, because Cain's vengeance would have been sevenfold by God, then anyone who tries to kill me, God's vengeance on him will be 77-fold. He's trying to protect himself by using God's mercy. And this is something that happens over and over again in our history and in today's society. We act like God's mercy is a given to us where it was gracefully given. We, like, there's a saying in my home country where if someone is good to you, 
and you just take advantage of that you're just riding his back and that's what it is it's like you're not appreciative that it's happening it's you're expecting grace and mercy and all these things to come to you all these good things to come to you from that person or from that or from that being and that's what that's what's happening right here is that he never even asked god for this he just declared anyone who tries to kill me God's vengeance on him will be 77 times fold. And that's just, that's one of the saddest things I've read because it's so true in today's world. In today's world, we are still taking advantage of everything God gives us. And we expect good things to come from us from God. And it, and God only gives us good things. We're going to get to that in our Bible series. But the fact that we're taking advantage of God like that is really just sad. Let's continue. Again, Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore a son, and he named him Seth, Seth saying, God has, app- has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. As for Seth, to him also a son was born, his name Enosh, and he hoped in the Lord God and called upon his name. 